Thank you very much. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, we are all here to learn from each other on uh, how we can um, do our decarbonization journey. And uh, so th and I'll try to uh, con speak something about our platform, Oceanics, and the lessons we have learned. And we will start with ranking as a mechanism to understand where we are, and then probably move towards the sources of these emissions so that you can decide uh, the path you want to follow. So as a company, Navalt um, uh, Group primarily does all these marine transport efficiency solutions. So mostly solar boats and electric propulsion system is a primary activity. Uh, but we also have a software division, which is what Oceanics is, who does this ship performance analytics. And I will try to cover some of the aspects of that in this process. So fundamentally, uh, what we are trying to do is to understand where we are. And for that, there are so many matrices out there. Uh, you're already familiar with them. So when we are comparing the global fleet uh, or within the fleet, so the ranking might be a good mechanism. And each of these parameters we use gives different insights. So you, we need to understand what does it really convey. For example, if you were to take the CIA data, so there are about uh, 2,000 vessels data which we have, uh, we are monitoring, plus the EU MRV data which gives another few thousand. So for, for example, bulk carrier, there are about 11,288 vessels. So if you want to know where your vessel stands with respect to the whole spectrum of vessels worldwide, using CII, which obviously has its limitation, which was alluded by Frank also, uh, but it gives an indication since the CIA is the way which the whole world is talking at least now. So bulk carriers is one way to look. Then there you can also have tankers, which again there are about 11,000 tankers. You can benchmark and understand where one stands. Container there are about 6,000. So these are, you can assess your position based on the A by R ratio. So this is one indicator which we can use. Obviously, from a transport efficiency, EOI is better. Uh, it's a better indicator because you use the cargo uh, instead of the actual or the maximum dead weight. So there, the data points are less because you don't have the global EU MRV data to bank on. Then it is only the large fleet and plus the people who demand a quick ranking. That's how we have a few, uh, maybe around 5,000 vessels to give you that idea. So this is about bulk carriers, again, same with tankers and containers. You can do this for EUI. Now, when it comes to speed loss, typically speed loss doesn't directly convey to you the transport efficiency. It merely conveys to you the shift in performance or shift in uh, the hull degradation and propeller degradation compared to the original condition. So it might be an indicator of how good the maintenance has been done or how good you have, in the case of negative, which means how good you have done some other modifications to give, achieve better than sea trial performance. Uh, so this is a, a way to look at it. Uh, again, uh, there is something called cargo utilization factor, which you might want to check to be a good measure of how efficiently probably your chartering team is uh, connecting cargo and utilizing. So it's mostly the cargo ton mile compared to what is a maximum cargo ton mile, which gives you an indicator. Again, it's very type dependent. You get a lot of insights. Again, you can rank it across the world. So if you take the same CII data, and if you build the age of the vessel, if you, can, if you try to bring the age of the vessel into the picture, you would automatically assume that as the vessel gets older, you will see more and more vessels which are on the clustering on the right side. So the vessels which are on the top left are new yet underperforming, and one on the bottom right are old yet better performing. So this is just indication of where you are. And if you add a weightage to it, then you can rank the vessels basis this. You can make it a bit more complex by adding one more element, which is the months since dry dock, because the vessel performance is not same in the first year compared to the fifth year. So you want to add a third dimension, which is a month since dry dock, and then you plot the same thing, and then you try to understand. So the diagonal on the left to the right will give you the ideal one, and then the ones which are away from that 
gives an indication whether the vessel is good or bad with respect to CIA, considering the age and months in stratum. This is one of the best way to assess the ship management perspective on handling CIA. Uh, the same thing if you switch to speed loss and try to bring the age and then you mix the CIA also. Again, you can get some insights into the shift as you move right, you will tend to see that the CIA should worsen and you will also have a speed loss which is higher. So anybody who is moving away from that diagonal is a good performer and if you add the weightage to it, you know the ones which are better ranked. Add one more complexity by adding the months since dry dock. So this is a, uh, is a, 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 a the, probably the best way for the specifically the ship maintenance compared to the uh, sea trial condition. So if you want to see how good your ship management company is to take care of your maintenance, this might be one indicator for that. Okay, uh, so there are many other things for these rankings, so I'll not cover everything. Now let's come to, once you have the ranking, how do you decompose it or how do you separate out these effects? So you start off with understanding the emission pro or the sources of emissions and in which modes they are coming. So this is a starting point. And then you will want to separate the auxiliary engine and boiler separately and the main engine separately. And the why we do that uh, in terms of, let's say, in the port anchorage stoppages, which is, you know, fundamentally that you need to reduce there. But then if you know between boiler and the auxiliary engine, you separate out all these, then you know the, the game you can play to save uh, emissions and thereby how to do or improve your CIA. So this is uh, the auxiliary engine and boiler, but the important one is a main engine. Now, fundamentally, uh, obviously we know that uh, from the fuel, the engine is providing you the power and the power you, from the propeller you get the thrust and the thrust gives you the speed. This is very clear to all of you. Now what is important is the weather effect, which is, a, which is current, wave or wind, how that affects the change in speed uh, uh, compared to the power it is being delivered, as well as the degradation or the hull and propeller, which also gives a re reduced speed for the same power, or even the engine giving lesser power for the same fuel. This is what is more crucial when you are trying to separate out. So first we will try to understand how we can separate out the weather effect. So there is a simple mechanism and there's a complex mechanism. The simple mechanism is like you assume or you take the sea state as a number to represent it. So if you were to do on the left side, you can see the effect of speed power curve by sea state. So the blue is sea state zero and red is sea state six. So there is a shift in that curve. So if you take a specific design draft and a specific speed, you also see the increase in the power due to sea state, say like 0% to 60-70% when it comes to sea state 6, or sea state 8, sorry. So this is very dependent on both speed and the draft. So you can add one more complexity by add, act, taking the actual wind speed and direction and the wave spectrum. I think the previous speakers have alluded to that. So what you do is, Every single day of the voyage, you will compute this effect of weather, which is shown in the red. You will aggregate all that for the whole year, and then you add up to find what is my main engine consumption due to the weather effect, the current wind and wind. So you know that block of fuel is due to this weather effect for the whole year. The same thing with regards to hull and propeller fouling. So we already know about ISO 1930 and how it helps understand the speed loss and understand the change in performance. So we may want to start from there, but then you have to go beyond ISO to find out what is the change in fuel because of that. So you will want to do the, uh, the change in speed is what is mentioned there. So you want to shift the change in power and then the change in fuel thereby so that you can find the difference in fuel due to the degradation. And you have to do again for so one way to measure this degradation is like you, you plot it down and see the average for the whole year. This is one way. A bit more complex way is instead of treating this as an average, the, the degradation will have a slope. So you find the slope and then you find the increased degradation. 
so that every single day you compute the effect due to degradation add uh, add them all up for the for the year you get the block of fuel which is purely due to the hull degradation same thing you do for the engine you monitor the sfoc consumption sfoc values you plot the degradation or switch in or shift in the sfoc curve which is engine degradation you compute that for again the whole year it's very small violet dots on top that represents main engine degradation which you will add up for the whole year and then you get that small part which is machinery degradation so you get the three things separated out which will tell you which are the three types of solutions you will work on what remains actually is a new ship condition so ideally if you were a new ship this is what your consumption should have been and going in a very calm condition so this is overall breakdown once you do then you will know how you can address it the important thing is each type of vessel and each type of operation may have a differences in this percentages on each of these blocks that also helps you understand which area of decarbonizing solution you should focus on and not like uh, broad base uh, you apply the same solution across all your ships you don't do that you have to choose the most effective one because it has to give you the correct roi so finally we talk about the path towards decarbonization so if i quickly summarize the top part was a port anchorage so how do you reduce that clearly uh, one way is obviously increasing that sailing percentage or the uh, the auxiliary engine consumption port you do by coal dining and various mechanisms this is a small part but may have some limitations because operations constraints are there but then you also have the auxiliary engine in the sailing and maneuvering condition you have to monitor the auxiliary engine condition plus you also manage the load balancing and whether you are running more generators than necessary etc these things you can do and manage this consumption can you reduce it the weather effect obviously uh, the route optimization is one way and but it can save a small part because eventually there is a commercial decision to go from place a to b you cannot obviously wait for the weather to be calm you can minimize or reduce that effect to some extent regarding the uh, effect of hull degradation you may want to monitor the whole thing so there was an example where the dry dock itself was mentioned so one way is to assess whether your latest dry dock compared to previous way this is one way or you could also assess how good the in service performance like late the for the first one year versus the rest which is what all the paint contracts are written on so th- you might want to see this as a mechanism also and also when do you do the maintenance so that what we call as a maintenance trigger so you check the first 3 6 or 12 months compared to the latest 3 6 12 months and decide when do you need a trigger so this is all about hull performance monitoring which may yield you some benefit in that hull degradation you may be able to control to some extent the same thing machinery if you do that engine monitoring and timely maintenance that part of machinery degradation you may be able to manage and control now <clears throat> the new ship condition approach obviously there are three ways one is the whole thing about energy saving solution then there is renewable energy and then there is a cleaner fuels so energy saving solutions again a lot of broad buckets so if i take operations as a way trim optimization the easiest thing to do and is a low hanging fruit maybe 2 to 5% you get by that there are a lot of things on hull resistance from the very proven hull coating to the one which is not yet proven very well which is air lubrication there are a lot of techniques you get maybe 1 5 to 10% you can easily achieve there or propeller flow conditioning again lot of techniques maybe a bit smaller benefits or you have propeller modification again i'm just giving a sweep of all the possible solutions in that space and then there is maneuvering devices you may want to try these engine of course on main engine side also you can play with these and auxiliary engine loads like simple things like led lightings these are again have a small small effect but the key decision is the marginal benefit should be more than the marginal cost that's a key economic decision once you have to take so <clears throat> renewable energy is a is a second type and here wind is the most potential in the sea so this is again a very proven technique so you have lot of installations happening 
and maybe in this year there are about 50 odd commercial ships coming out with many of this wind solution 5 to 25 percent especially in combination with route optimization solar is very low uh, potential in the large commercial ships but the investment is low the returns are easily measurable and attributable unlike the main engine solutions you can measure the power and typically on a commercial ships not on the row row uh, row packs or row row but on the commercial ships like tanker bulk carriers you may you can put about 50 kilowatt solar and you get that money back in less than five years at today's fuel price and so this is a very proven again easy way of getting that small benefit battery tech is not very um, potential from a storage perspective but for power shaving especially in container vessels where you have a reefer container this might be a good approach uh, clean fuels i'm not going into details there are so many things available lng seems to be the immediate <coughs> whatever or a short i mean um, option what people are trying to follow but in the long term it could be hydrogen as a way but all this finally you need a way to measure the benefit so fundamentally again iso 1930 has given a small part of it you have to build on top to understand what is the fuel saving and then build the fuel pricing to get the roi so this is very important for your economic decision what you should do and lastly <coughs> technically increasing the cargo utilization makes logical sense so it's a transport efficiency this is just an example to show when you go from a full cargo vessel to a partially loaded the eoi is improve or is is becoming worse when you go to partially loaded but cii is improving which is obviously what i think the panel later will discuss on this is an but forget the cii in this case improving the uh, or loading will improve your performance and efficiency so this is the whole broad summary of what you can achieve and these are the ways in which the emissions can be reduced and this is the whole decarbonizing pathway you can say the top side is all about efficiencies whether you increase output or you decrease the input and then the lower half is all about renewable energy and clean fuel this is the whole pathway what can be followed so that it will all lead us to cleaner and quieter oceans. Thank you. <clears throat>